Okay, we are live. Hello everyone, welcome to day number 5073 of the COVID isolation period. First of all, let me just extend my warmest wishes and thoughts to you. I hope that you're all managing okay during this situation. I hope your loved ones are safe and well. I hope that you are safe and well. What I've really started to notice as we're entering weeks about four and five of this situation is I think people are just starting to crack. I see Cool Deep coming on. How are you doing, Cool Deep? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope to be doing some events uh, back at your lovely establishment very soon. Uh, for those of you who are watching, Cool Deep is one of the events managers that I work with at one of the venues for my in-person workshops, which are no longer in-person for the foreseeable future. So yes, this whole isolation period, we're in weeks four, five, maybe even more than that, depending on when your country went into this lockdown period. And I think we're just starting to see the tension. I think we're just starting to see the strain in people. I know for me in my personal life, in terms of my family, there's a couple family members who have had real wobbles in the past couple months and they've been feeling that frustration and that anger and the despair and I think this situation is starting to take a toll on people's mental health. It is starting to take a toll on people's social health as well. And I remember speaking about this right at the beginning of this whole situation saying that this stuff was just not being talked about enough. We were talking so much about the physical health risks which were real, which were serious but had to be dealt with. But the other considerations, the implications and outcomes of going into this lockdown period, I think we just really weren't talking about them enough. So what I'm hoping to do with my work and, and my personal sort of place and position that I have with you guys as my audience is to try and help with these aspects that we haven't really been talking about and haven't really had any guidance or support with, to be quite honest. So I hope to be some kind of shining star for you guys, bringing some form of energy and positivity into this time. And that is what today's session is going to be all about. As a number of you know, right at the beginning of this isolation period, I decided that I wanted to bring voices of hope and inspiration to the world because boy, oh boy, we were getting so much negative messaging, weren't we? And we still are getting so much negative messaging. And this, by the way, is not to downplay or downgrade what is going on. I've always emphasized the seriousness of what's going on. What I have also emphasized, though, is that if we just focus on the negative aspects, that is where we start going into these spirals. That is when these tensions and stresses really start to take hold and, and we start to feel overwhelmed. We start to feel powerless. We start to feel frustrated, hopeless. And more than ever, more than ever right now, we need to keep that hope. We need to keep that faith. We need to keep that strength. And if we're able to do that together, and we're able to help the people around us do that as well, that is what is going to help us to overcome and get through this situation. So I decided that for the Off Your Life podcast, I stepped up my interview schedule. I went from two a month to two a week. And I managed to interview 24 amazing people. Some of those episodes coming out now, some of you have already been engaging with them and listening to them. So thank you for the engagement. I'm glad that you've been appreciating and enjoying these episodes. I loved doing them. It was a really fun project. And I say that word fun with a bit of recognition that this isn't necessarily a fun time but I found a real sense of, of purpose and connection coming out of this. And I think you'll really find that in the conversations and the episodes as they come out. So some of the episodes are there for you already. Go to your podcast player, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, type in Author Your Life Podcast and you'll be able to access those interviews. They're coming out two times a week at the moment, or every Wednesday, every Sunday to keep you going and get you through this particular time that we're facing. What I loved about these conversations was as I was speaking with folks, I noticed the same messages coming up again and again. The same ideas, the same thought patterns, the same perspectives. And I recognized that these were patterns 
that we can take into our lives. These are patterns that, that we can use and understand to help us get through this time. There were four in particular that stood out to me and purely by chance, they actually form the acronym ORCS. Now, for any of you who know me personally, you'll know that I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan as well, let me know in the comments below. You can type nerd, you can type Lord of the Rings, you can type not all those who wander are lost. Anything you like, any Lord of the Rings reference, put it in the comments below so I know if I've got some fellow nerds watching this. Now, some people might think that I've deliberately engineered this acronym to spell out orcs. It actually just happened <laughs> purely coincidentally. By the time that I got to the third one, I went, oh, that spells orc. And the, the fourth one begins with S. This is going to be orcs. So this is kind of a, a funny coincidence, but actually, if we roll with this analogy a little bit more, for any of you who are familiar with Lord of the Rings, you'll know that the orcs are the forces of evil. They are the soldiers of evil. And we can feel that maybe right now, we are uh, not in a situation where we're against the forces of evil, but we're against something that's very dangerous, very threatening, very scary. We can see that perhaps all of these little viruses that are going around right now are the orcs. They're out to do no good. They're out to kill us. So how can we take on these orcs? How can we fight back against these orcs, against these little viruses that are going around? These are four principles that came out of so many of my interviews and I think they're going to really help you through this period. So let's unveil what each of these little orcs stands for, starting off with the first one. This was, it was incredible how often this was coming up. I think 80 to 90% of my interviewees said this word. And it's funny because I actually had a pre-prepared question why I wanted to explore this. And I thought that I was somewhat in a minority thinking this way. And I thought it was my kind of natural optimism coming to the fore. And I wasn't too sure about asking this particular question. But actually, my guests were preempting it long before I even started asking the question. And the words that kept on coming up, 80 to 90% of these interviews, and you'll hear my guests say this in the interviews as you listen to them as they come out. The word... Opportunity. Opportunity. And my pre-prepared question that I wanted to ask people was, do you think there are any opportunities in this situation? And I was concerned that perhaps this might come across as, unsens as insensitive. I was concerned that maybe this will come across as me looking like I don't take the, ser the situation seriously when I do. And I've been emphasizing how serious this is for since the situation really hit that tipping point when the lockdown measures start, started coming into place. But actually, they were all saying it before me. They were allaying the, the concerns and, and worries that I had. My guests kept on speaking about the opportunities. Because what this situation has given a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us, it's given us time and it's given us space. We were living such busy lives before all this started. And for a lot of us, excluding the key workers, <laughs> excluding the parents who suddenly find themselves homeschooling their kids 24 seven, I'm leaving you guys out of this because I know that you might have actually found yourself having less time and less space at the moment. And I understand that. And I just wanna say, I really appreciate that as well. I appreciate what you guys as key workers are doing you're helping the ill, you're delivering food to our doors, you're keeping the supermarkets open, you're keeping the lights on, you're keeping the internet working. Boy, I think things would be a whole lot different if we were isolated without the internet right now, right? How would we be connecting with people? How would we be entertaining ourselves? How would we be educating ourselves? So thank you to all of the key workers who have found a spare five minutes in your day to tune on and watch this live. We appreciate you, we celebrate you. And you know what, here in the UK, every Thursday at 8 p.m. we have a clap for the carers, we have a clap for the NHS, the medical staff, care staff, and absolutely, they deserve the, the heroic adulation that they're getting for really being on the front lines of this. 
But you know who else, does, who else deserves claps right now? The bin men. The people working in the supermarkets. The engineers, electricians. Those guys deserve claps as well. So thank you to all of our key workers who are still out there working. And also thank you to the parents as well. Thank you for, for taking on the extra responsibility and the extra time of, of looking after your children, of taking that time to educate them. And I know that you're having to do this, a lot of you, whilst you're still trying to work, you're, you're either actually going out and doing your key work or you're trying to work at home. I know it's not easy. I know it's difficult. So I know for you guys, time and space might be limited right now. But I think this maybe actually applies to even those of you who are still working hard during this period and, and still have so much on your plate during this period. That things have generally slowed down. And generally speaking, we find ourselves with so much time and space on our hands. And there's so many opportunities that open up out of this. And this is what my guest kept on saying, that this situation gives us the opportunity to. Why don't you take the opportunity to? You can find opportunities everywhere during this period. Now this opportunity can take many different forms. I was actually just re-listening to one of the interviews today on my state-sanctioned walk, and what they were saying was, actually, there's some financial opportunities right now. Stock markets have, have taken a massive dip. Anything that you're buying now, you're buying budget, you're buying value stuff that in the future, is going to rise. When we come out of the recession, we see this time and time again that the stock markets dip into a recession and then they come out again. There's actually financial opportunities to, to buy things on the market for cheap. Things like real estate. Nobody's looking to, to move and buy houses right now if you're involved in real estate and if there's anything still going, it's going to be at a massively reduced price. So there's these financial opportunities that are available at the moment, even though a lot of us are really financially struggling, we've been furloughed, we've had our income slashed, if you're self-employed or your clients have disappeared. So if you're in a reasonably stable financial situation, there are actually financial opportunities that are out there for you. But there's plenty of other opportunities there as well. There's opportunities for education, learning, skill development, that musical instrument that you've always wanted to play, that language that you've always wanted to learn, that online course that you bought 18 months ago and it's been sitting as a bookmark on your browser. Now is the opportunity to invest in your learning and your skill development. That's something that I've talked about in these previous sessions before. I've talked about what skills are you going to work on during this time because you can see this time as an incubator where you're learning, growing, developing and when you come out of the other side, into your job or into your business or even just into some new pastimes and hobbies, you will look back and appreciate this incubation period where you're able to build and develop those skills. Opportunity for connection. I've actually been speaking way more to friends and family during isolation than I did when we had in-person connection with each other. Why? Because everyone's gone, Oh no, we can't see people, so we've got to make sure we book in those Zooms, we've got to make sure that we have those dinner dates, we've got to make sure we have those virtual pub quizzes. <laughs> These are all things that I have been doing. I've actually been seeing so many people at the moment. I did all of those podcast interviews, I spoke to 24 people over the course of two weeks, I had multiple conversations per day. I've been making sure to connect with some of my friends in my network as well, people have been on the podcast previously, uh, people who I've done collabor collaboration work with, and also just friends and family. I know for my family, we now have a Thursday pub quiz where every Thursday we get on the group Zoom. We have on Saturday, we watch the, the live comedy, one of our comedy clubs here in Glasgow, does a live stream where they have comedians on. And so we've had a couple people joining us on Zoom to watch the comedy. So actually, there's so much opportunity for connection right now because most people are sitting on their butts at home and they've run out of things to watch on Netflix and they're saying, man, sure, let's get on a Zoom. I'm not doing anything right now. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. I've done about two hours of work, which is the only thing that I can do right now because most things are shut down. So we have such an opportunity to connect right now to foster existing connections with all of our friends around the world. I know for me, the majority of my friendship circle do not live in the same city as me. So there's some real kind of 
logistics and structure that goes into seeing them normally, seeing them in different cities, trying to bring us all together. Now we just turn the Zoom on and we chat when we're hundreds of miles away, when we're in different countries. So there's actually fantastic opportunities for connection right now with existing connections and also make some new connections. I've been really active in some of the Facebook groups that I'm a part of and everyone in these groups is also more active, they're more engaged because we're all going, how are we going to connect? How are we going to keep that social contact? So there's actually an opportunity to make new connections as well. I know I don't really do very much traditional networking anymore, but I know a couple of traditional networking groups I'm a, a part of, they're now doing virtual networking. Everyone just comes on a Zoom and you do like a sort of speed dating sort of thing where you kind of go around and speak to each person for like a minute or two minutes. So there are so many opportunities right now for connection. Have you guys been finding that there's been any opportunities in this current situation? Let me know in the comments below. What opportunities have you been taking advantage of right now? Did you invest in the S&P 500? Have you downloaded Duolingo and you're, you're learning Spanish? Have you been booking those Zooms <laughs> like you're being paid to do it? Let me know in the comments below. I've got a little reminder that's just popped up here. Let me flick that out of the way so I can see you guys again. So this was the first thing that was coming up in these podcast interviews. And as I said, 80 to 90% of the guests were saying it before I'd even asked the question about opportunities. So this was the number one takeaway that this situation right now is such a unique situation that there are opportunities available right now that are never going to be available again. Never going to be available again. You know, touch woods, cross our hearts, hope to die, we never find ourselves in this type of situation again, to this scale where it's a global problem because in all honesty, we weren't prepared for this, were we? We hadn't faced a pandemic in the, the era of globalization. Now, of course, there's been historic pandemics, things like the Black Death, things like the Spanish flu, but they didn't exist in the era of planes, trains, international travel, international work, where things could spread so much faster. We weren't prepared for a 21st century pandemic, really, were we? So hopefully this type of thing doesn't happen again, but let's face it, it probably will. But let's hope that when that time comes, we learn from this situation and we don't find ourselves in the exact set of circumstances that we did this time around. So this might be the only time we find ourselves in a COVID-19 global isolation period. There are opportunities available right now that will never be available again. What are those opportunities for you? So let's move on to the second word. The second word is routine. Now again, this is something that I remember talking about when we went into isolation period. I stressed how important it is to keep your routines. I see some comments coming up. Who have we got there? We've got, uh, we've got Carol Morrison. <laughs> Carol, you watch so many of these. Good to see you again. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for sharing with us today. So yes, routines. You've got to keep your routines. And I think a lot of people in those first couple weeks, they didn't do this. They did not keep those routines. They started binging Netflix. They order the crates of wine and they just let things go. They let their exercise go, they let their sleep patterns go, they let their discipline and productivity go. And by the way, this isn't me judging people who've done this. This isn't me saying, well, look at you and how terrible you were and you, you didn't deal with isolation properly. What I'm saying is that this is what happened for people. And now they're recognizing that as the weeks and weeks go by, this isn't the way to get through the situation. You can't out binge this isolation period. You can't out drink this isolation period. Because for us in the UK, and I think it's pretty similar for everyone else watching across the world as well, let me know if you guys are coming out of lockdown anytime soon, if you're coming out, if some of the restrictions are being lifted a little bit. I know that in New Zealand, I think they are changing the level of isolation. Now, New Zealand were sort of really shit hot on the act. They shut everything down quick, and they nipped it in the bud, and so they've been able to loosen the restrictions a little bit more. 
Here in the UK, we were slow, and by the time that we started putting in the precautions, things had already started to accelerate. So it looks like we're going to be in a little bit longer here in the UK. I don't know what it is for everywhere else around the world. Let me know in the comments below what it's like in your country. For us in the UK, we had our three week lockdown period. And then last week we had our update that said we're going to be in lockdown for another three weeks. Now, I remember when lockdown first went in, I said nine to 12 weeks. I said, we've acted too slow. We've put this in too late. Now we're going to have to spend longer in this period to make sure that we're safe. So I said nine to 12 weeks, and I think that that's still accurate. I would be surprised if it's nine weeks now. I would be surprised if it's nine weeks. I think it's going to be 12. If we're in this situation for 12 weeks, you can't Netflix for 12 weeks. You can't drink wine for 12 weeks. You've got to have a routine in this period. And that's what my guests were saying. They're stressing how important it was to start the mornings how you normally do. If you meditate, if you have your green smoothie, if you do your stretching, if you do your exercise, still do that. Still stick to your normal routines. I know for me, my routines haven't changed. I get up, I drink a glass of water, I meditate, and then I have my smoothie, I get ready, and then I normally do some exercise. Sometimes I exercise in the morning, Sometimes I now exercise in the afternoon or evening, and I'll actually explain a little bit more about why I do that later on here, I think, actually. Am I? No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you now, actually. So sometimes I exercise in the morning because that's what I like to use to start the energy. But the way that the weather has been at the moment, it's been quite sunny, and the sunshine has been nicest around about four o'clock in the afternoon. So I just wait until then, and then I go out when it's sunniest and it's warmest. So that is the, <laughs> that's the logic behind my routine at the moment. But I do have now actually an isolation routine. Me and my wife, we went into isolation a little bit earlier than the lockdown. I've said this before on some of these videos that uh, my wife was displaying coronavirus symptoms. She probably had mild coronavirus looking at things. So we went into self-isolation about eight to nine days before the lockdown came into play. So we're actually very set in our isolation routine now. The alarm goes off at eight. I do my normal morning routines, which take about 45 minutes to an hour. And then I start work. Uh, my wife logs on at half eight. And so she starts her work day. That's her kind of on the clock. Then we, we have our calls during the day and we are really bad at scheduling <laughs> our calls at the same time. So she'll be on a call, then I'll be on a call. So we Actually, sometimes don't see each other very much during the day. And then in the evenings, what we do is uh, she'll kind of decompress. She'll do her Sudoku. She'll put on some music. What I'm doing is I'm doing some kind of online courses in the evening. So I'm just sort of like sitting, I'm writing notes, I'm listening, or I go for my evening walk and I'm listening to podcasts instead. And then we usually watch a little bit of television in the evening before we go to bed for maybe about half an hour or an hour. And then we go to bed and kind of do our reading. My wife does more Sudoku. <laughs> she's got like three Sudoku books at the moment and she's blasting her way through them in this isolation period. We have our Thursday family pub quiz. We have our Saturday night comedy show. So we actually have this inset isolation routine that we're repeating week after week after week after week. You need to do the same. You need to do the same. And something that actually came out one of my interviews is the guest was saying, it's really important to still distinguish between the week and the weekend. Because if you're at home, Groundhog Day, every single day, you can start to lose track of the days. You can start to lose track of the structure of the week. So if you are your kind of traditional Monday to Friday worker, then make sure your Monday to Friday looks different from your Saturday to Sunday. And there's all sorts of little rituals and practices that you can put in just to change that. Make sure, for example, you only watch films at the weekend. Now, I know that seems like you're kind of depriving yourself and it seems a bit unfair, but how many people have your Friday night or your Saturday night movie night where you and the family, you sit around and you watch a movie, don't you? Make sure you still have that. Make sure you still have your Friday or Saturday night movie night because that reminds you that it's the weekend. It keeps you in that routine of 
this is what I do on Mondays, this is what I do on Thursdays, this is what I do on Sundays. Make sure you keep those routines, they are so, so important. Don't get lost in the inertia, don't get lost down the Netflix trap, don't get lost down the YouTube recommended videos, don't lose your routine. Now more than ever, it's so important to keep your routine because there's so many things in your routine that are missing right now that you can't do. You've got to make sure you hold on to the things that you can do, the things that are still in your routine. And that actually leads in a little bit more to number three. Number three, the C of the orcs is Control. <sighs> we couldn't control this, could we? We had no idea this was coming. As nations and governments, we tried to control it. Wash your hands, don't shake hands, keep apart from each other. It didn't work, did it? We couldn't control what was about to happen. And now we find ourselves in these very strict precautions and measures to try and control what's happening. And, and we are controlling what's happening to a certain degree. But man, are we really starting to feel this in our individual lives that we've lost a lot of control? Because in some respects we have. We have lost control. We can't just do anything that we want now. We can't just decide, I'm going to go out and do this, or I'm going to go out and visit that person or I'm going to go down and buy that thing in the shops. We've lost a lot of this control. And I think this is where the mental health aspect is really starting to come in now, that when people feel like they lose control of their life, they start to feel they're losing control of themselves. And I know for the, the kind of wobbles that we've had in our family during this period, partially, not completely, but partially, this has actually been the factor. And for any of you who've kind of been to my, my seminars or, or done work for me before, you'll know that I often talk about these two circles, right? Goodness me, that is, <laughs> that is a, let's see if I can oh, get that last little bit of ink out of the pen. How's that looking on the camera? Yeah, that's looking all right, we can see it. So I talk about these two circles. This circle, is what you can control. This circle, is what you cannot control. And guess where a lot of things are at the moment, even more than normal, they're out here. Oh, it's so much better when I use that part of the pen. There we go. There are so many things that are outside our circle of control. You can sometimes have an influence on these things. You can have an effect on these things, but you cannot control them. And in normal life, these are things like people's opinions of you. They're things like the financial markets, but you can't control that the financial markets are going down right now. They're things like Layoffs. If your company goes bust and you lose your job as a result, you are not in control of that outcome. So there are so many things in life that are outside of our control. And when we start to get hung up and frustrated about these, we put ourselves in a, a no-win situation. We get annoyed at the things that we can't control. And then because we can't control them, we can't change them. We just get stuck in this loop of feeling frustrated, feeling powerless, feeling helpless. And even more in this situation, because more stuff has shifted from inside our circle of control to outside our circle of control, this feeling of frustration and, and helplessness can come up more than ever. So what we really have to do, and, and what several of my podcast guests were saying, is we've got to focus on what we can control and what we can influence during this time. So what are some things that you can control? your routine. You can control the things that you're doing on a regular basis as part of your everyday routines. You can control 
what opportunities you go after right now, your, your learning opportunities, your relationship opportunities, your financial opportunities even, these are the things that you can control. These are the things that you therefore have to focus on. When you have this circle and you're thinking about what you have in your life right now, what can you control? What can't you control? Schools are shut. Can't control that. That's what the government's decided. What can I control? Thinking about what would be the best thing to do for my child at this time. How much are we going to try to have a formalized education system with them? How much are we just going to allow them to be children? To, to play out in the garden? To, to get on FaceTime with their friends? To, to do drawing? To do art? To do creative stuff that they actually don't often have the opportunity to do in the formal education system. So you can't control that your kids aren't going to school. You can control what does the curriculum look like whilst they're at home. And that is entirely your choice. You can say, you know what? I don't place that much onus on the formal education anyway. I'm just going to let my kids be kids right now. They can go out and they can walk the dog. They can play in the garden. They can do creative stuff. Absolutely. They can, they can draw. Uh, they can they can make things. I know one of my guests was saying that uh, she's been making robots with her children using toilet paper rolls. <laughs> Funnily enough, those sacred things that we have. Oh, it's her, it's, her, it's her toilet roll. So she's been making toy robots out of that. So even though they don't have a formal education system, don't you think your child learns something by being in nature, by looking after an animal, by creating something? Perhaps they're reading more. Perhaps they're reading their horrible histories. I know I loved those horrible histories when I was a kid. They might be going through the entire set right now. So they're still learning, but they're doing it through the fun medium of horrible histories rather than the teacher standing up on the blackboard and writing dates again and again and again and copy all that down and here's some questions to do afterwards. So this might actually be an opportunity to do some more kind of organic education with your children. What can you control and what can you not control? It's so important to make sure that your focus is fixed right now on this space. I know for me it's funny that uh, Cool Deep <laughs> tuned in earlier, one of my events managers at one of the hotels where I run my events. So when the, the lockdown process was pretty much just coming in, maybe in the last sort of seven to 10 days before the official lockdown came into place, I was recognizing that I was needing to cancel my events. And what I recognized that, especially when the lockdown came in, that I've basically written off my events for this year. Like really, I have. Not just in terms of thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to go outside my house for 12 weeks. That's how long I think we'll be in the strictest isolation period. But then what about the phases and the reintegration afterwards? Yes, we're going to be outside our doors, but how comfortable are people going to be, even if the lockdown procedures aren't in place, are they still going to be comfortable in public gatherings of coming together with people at my events? I don't think so. And I was starting to notice this trend before we went into official lockdown, that even though there was no official lockdown, there was no restriction on group gatherings, people were starting to avoid them. So what I'm recognizing is there's not just a governmental regulation aspect to not being able to run my events. There's also going to be a psychological hangover from all of this. And I think that is going to take months and it's going to take beyond 2020 before that returns to normal. And I don't think we are returning to normal ever again. I think this has just changed too many things. It's made too many people think in a different way. And I don't think we are ever going to return to what we had before this. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments, by the way. Do you think that we're going to go back to normal? What do you think is going to change during this period? How long do you think that this is going to last? Now, obviously, we're not experts here, are we? We're, we're not medical staff. Well, maybe some of you are, but I'm not. We're not medical professionals. We're not people who are, who are dealing with the projections and things of like this. But how long do you think this situation might last?
let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to see what other people are thinking. So I know for me, I've pretty much actually written off my in-person events for the entire year. And I don't anticipate really doing them at all before the autumn, before September, October time. That's kind of my rough projections. And to be honest, the way that I'm pivoting and moving in my business at the moment, that word pivot's been a bit of a buzzword at the moment. I'm not pivoting, I'm reprioritizing the things that I already do. So I already have a podcast, I already do online videos. I'm just reprioritizing those things at the moment. And how things have been going at the moment, I might not actually be coming back into in-person events anytime soon because of these things that have come into play. So what can we control during this? Ah, that's why I was telling that story. I, I, I got lost in the story there. Apologies, folks, I was rambling there. So yes, when I canceled my events for the year, I felt zero stress about them. Why did I feel zero stress about them? Because my in-person events had gone into that circle. I couldn't control them. I couldn't control that they were cancelled. I couldn't control that people probably aren't want, going to want to come back to group settings for a long time even after lockdown. So that went straight out of the circle of this bothers me into the circle of this doesn't bother me at all. If I can't control it, I can't let it bother me. So in-person events, they just went, they're gone. And this needs to be the same for you as well. Anything outside of your circle of control, don't worry about it. And something that I think people are doing right now that is really, really unhealthy, and it's actually been part of the reason why some of my family have had wobbles recently, they're sitting watching the news all of the time. Now, if there's one thing that reminds you what is outside of your circle of control and makes you feel bad and negative about it, it's the news. Now, I'm not saying don't be aware of the situation. I'm not saying to pretend the situation isn't happening. What I'm saying is if you sit down and watch the news telling you the same thing that yet nothing has changed, there is still a virus, people are still dying, you're still in your homes, why is that going to make you feel any better? How could that make you feel any different? When you hear those types of messages again and again, it just makes you feel like the world is against you. Now, absolutely, we're in a tough situation right now, but that's not the full story. What was that word that I said right up here at the beginning? I was talking about the opportunities of this situation. Yes, this is a difficult situation, and there are things that we can take from it at the same time. Yes, there are people who we're worried about, and we have an opportunity to connect with them perhaps ever than we did before. Life is not black and white. We can have a bad situation, but not get lost in the, the drama and the theatrics of it. And basically when you watch the news from the beginning of your day to the end of your day, all you're doing is going through the dramatics of it. They'll be telling you the death toll. They'll be telling you the numbers. It'll be fright, fright and shock. Be aware of these things, but don't get fixated on these things. Because all of that stuff, it's outside of your control. You can be aware of it being in that circle, but if you get fixated and focused on it, that's when we get start to get in some really unhealthy places. And I know for a couple of members of my family, we've had to tell them, stop watching the news. <laughs> We had one family member who was waking up at six in the morning, turning on the TV, and it didn't go off until 10 in the evening. It's just News 24 on repeat. People dying, people ill, people dying, people ill. Of course that's going to make you feel bad. And there's nothing you can do about it. So stop focusing on what you can't control right now. Focus on what you can control. And one thing that I think we should really be focusing on, and this is where I'm going to finish up today, the very last letter, one thing I think we can all focus on right now that's going to give us that sense of purpose, that sense of meaning, a sense of I'm still valuable and worth something, the S is service. How can you serve during this period? 
Now we've got some amazing servants out there right now. I mentioned them right at the beginning of this live, didn't I? The, the medical staff, the carers, the key workers, the people keeping the lights on, the people who are still keeping this internet on. The internet hasn't cut out once during this live, has it? There are people who are responsible for that. There are people who have helped make that happen. So we've got so many people out there who are serving already just by being essential cogs in keeping society operating right now. And huge kudos to all of you for being in that place of service and serving during this difficult time. But we can be those servants too. In fact, if I was to pick the second most mentioned word in those interviews that I did, first was opportunity, second was service. Easily. Easily the second most mentioned word in those 24 interviews that I did was service. Talking about how can we serve right now? How can you step up with the skills, knowledge and experience that you have right now and how can you make a difference during this time? Are you going to sit there on your butt and watch Netflix all day or are you going to help in this situation? Are you going to sit there and be a spectator or are you going to step up and be a servant? And there's so many different ways that we can do this. There's very basic stuff. There's the donations, right? I know a lot of us are in financial difficulty. Some of us are not in as much financial difficulty as others. So from the very basic steps of you can be donating to charities, you can be donating to Tom, the, the veteran who's walking up and down his garden to raise money for the NHS. You can be donating food to your local food bank. That's something that, that we've been doing when we've been doing our, our big weekly shops. We've bought a couple of extra tins, a couple of extra sanitary products, and we've been taking them down to the food bank. Because boy, if people were destitute before this situation, people are destitute after this situation and during this situation. So that's your very basic levels of service. You can, you can give things and you can give money. But actually, I challenge you to do more than that. I challenge you to think about what can you do specifically and uniquely to serve during this time. And something that I've really witnessed in, in my communities and my networks, and, and perhaps this is just my kind of social bubble that I live in, in terms of the thought leadership world of authors and speakers and, and coaches and, and all the rest of them, is that I've seen so many people who are stepping up with new projects right now. We're in a recession and people are being more creative than ever. That I just saw a lady, in fact, one of my podcast guests posted yesterday on Facebook, she is going to co-author a book for women during this crisis. She's pointing out how women are being disproportionately affected compared to men during this situation. For example, if they're a single mother and their work's been taken away, well, what do they do in this situation? That's a very different challenge to the, the kind of full nuclear household where two incomes are still coming. So what she said is she wants 99 other women to come together and co-author a book with her. Now that is an opportunity that would have never arisen. She would have never have been inspired to do that if we weren't in this exact situation we are right now. How can you serve during this time? How can you step up? What are you uniquely placed to do? So you might find yourself out of work right now. You might find yourself furloughed. You might find yourself in part-time hours. You might find yourself working from home. What skills are you able to contribute during this time? For me, when this whole situation came out, I knew I had to step up my service. I knew that I was in this unique position to help people with some of the situations that weren't being talked about. Remember I said right at the beginning of this video, I went mental health, loneliness. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's addressing it. How can I help with the mental health and loneliness situation? Because I saw I did have a position in which I could help, a position in which I could serve. I could keep people uplifted. I could keep people hopeful. I could keep people optimistic. I could keep people purposeful, disciplined. I could help people to adjust and survive this situation. And I had to step up and think about how I could do that. And that's why I recorded that entire series of podcast interviews that I did, the isolation inspiration interviews. They were designed specifically about if you're in isolation and you need inspiration, here's an interview for you. 
And I was able to get other people around the world who had that same service drive, who said, yes, I want to be that voice. They put their hands up and said, I want to be that inspiration. And I was able to connect with them, have some great interviews. You've been listening to some of them already. There's so many more still to come out for what I anticipate will be this 12 week period. That's why I did 24 interviews, two interviews a week for 12 weeks, because that's how long I think we're in this situation for. How can you serve in that way? I knew for me, what I had to double down on was my podcast. What I had to double down on was my online communities. I started a Facebook group this month. I started a Facebook group for other people in the speaking industry to bring people together, to bring their messages together. I made my, uh, my membership platform free for three months. My Author Life Academy, which is a, an online educational community, normally people subscribe for $27 a month. I've made that free for the next three months. Because I looked at these things and I said, yes, that's how I can serve. That's how I can make a difference. How can you serve? How can you make a difference during this time? Let me know in the comments below, what are you doing to serve right now? What can you do to serve right now? What's a project that you can start? What's a collaboration that you can build? What is a basic thing that you can do? Knock on your neighbor's door, make sure they're okay. Take food to your granny who can't get out of the house. Take those couple of extra items down to the food bank. <laughs> Give a fiver to, to poor Tom going up and down his, his garden, raising money for the NHS. What can you do to serve right now? And I think if we all embrace this mindset, that's what gets us through this situation. When we face the darkest and most difficult times in humanity, in our history, we've always got through these things by people stepping up and serve. Not people sitting on the sidelines, ignoring the situation, burying their heads in the sand. The way that we got through these situations was people stepped up and they served. And that's what I challenge you to do here today. How can you step up and serve? And you don't need to be an amazing global leader in order to serve right now. You don't even need to feel that you are a leader to serve right now. There are so many ways that we can serve and help and support during this time. Which one is yours? And if there's anything that I want you to take away from today's session, it's that final question. What are you doing to serve right now? And when you have that place of service, that's where you start thinking beyond yourself. You don't get trapped in your thoughts, your frustrations, the things outside of your control. You start thinking of other people. That gives you that purpose, that drive, that hope, that inspiration, that sense of meaning, that sense of worth, which is exactly what we need during this time. So folks, with these four principles, we can fight off the orcs. We can fight off those little viruses that are trying to get us, trying to wreck us, trying to bring the worst out of us. Because yes, we've seen some bad aspects of humanity during this time, but actually what we are doing is we're standing up to the orcs and we're saying, you're not going to see the worst of us, you are going to see the best of us. And that I think is the message for this time. That COVID-19 didn't bring the worst out of us, it brought the best. So go out there and bring your best and I hope that these four principles are going to help you. So everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I have seen the eyeballs, I have seen the comments, and I've seen kind of really fixated eyeballs as well. That number hasn't been tuning in and out. I've seen a lot of you who have been watching this for a really extended period of time. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for engaging. I've seen the comments going in. I'm going to go through and give those a little reads just now. So thank you everyone for joining. And as always, stay at home, stay safe, and save lives. And maybe right with that last one, there's something that you can do to serve that will save a life, even if it's just your own. Thank you folks for joining and I'll speak to you soon.